Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saver. I'm Brandon, back with Jesse and Garrett. Morning, Morning. sir. Morning. 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 You what episode are we on? Might want to take a drink. Episode 59. We're one off 60 there. That's, that's <laughs> good that's math. great, buddy. Good job, pal. You notice that. So proud of you. Thank you. You're doing a good job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just keep up the good work. Last week, we talked a little bit about marketing and selling. I think that was a really good episode. I got a lot of good feedback. Yeah, I thought it was a good episode. I think every episode's pretty good. Yeah, not gonna I agree lie to you. with you. I'm a little biased. I agree with you. It includes me, so obviously. Includes That's you. That's true. That's very true. It includes Garrett. Yeah. Garrett brings it down a little bit. Mm, at times. You well, know, this morning I almost threw his apple out of here. I dude. And he just crunched it. I'm like, why right. is that irritating me Right. So he, can't, he was chewing that apple so loud. It was crunching so the hard. loudest apple ever. And now he's got his white claw over here on the counter. You like that? You like that? <laughs> I just love white claws. Brings his white claw Four in every morning. Four o'clock in the morning. Four o'clock in the morning in the closet. Hard. Hanging out in this little janitor closet. Speaking of janitor closet, we uh, we had training what, a week or two ago, and customers came and actually checked out the podcast. Where was I? You were in uh, Nashville, I believe. Oh, okay. We had, we had Megan and Jar and Yarborough come check us out and saw the podcast room, and it's pretty neat. Very nice people. Yeah, very awesome people. I didn't get to meet him. Oh, he's badass. Is he? Oh, Jaron, absolutely. The guy's a badass. He arrested two terrorists by himself. He's got a sweet much. name. Yeah, absolutely. The guy's oh, an man. animal. I want to hear more of his stories. Wait, too. he arrested what? Two terrorists. With his bare hands? Yeah, yeah the FBI called. And they're like, hey, these terrorists are headed your way. Uh, we need you to stop them. He wow. told us the story. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Pretty funny, dude. Hey, yeah, how, hey awesome. how does it feel that you just heard a story about a guy that is already cooler than you'll ever be your oh, entire absolutely. life? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I want to be him. Yeah, His yeah, beard was phenomenal, too. Phenomenal beard. Well, you have to have it. I had to imagine he had a beard. Very, you just, very you can't arrest two terrorists and look like me. Oh, very <laughs> You just can't. Fella. No, I would have I got out and I would have yeah. took my suicide vest off. Yeah. I would have took my shoes off. I'd, Mr. Yarbrough, yes, sir. No, <laughs> please don't beat the terrorists out of me. I, uh... Yeah, I mean, you look like me, and I walk up, you know, full-grown baby man walking at you. Like, it's not intimidating. You're, no, I you're, just detonate. Yeah, you're just going to be like, get out of the way, child. You go ain't make stopping some, me. Go make some cookies. But, yeah, no, nice nice couple. You weren't here. We took a picture with them. That's cool. Can you crowd, Can you Photoshop me? No. In? I don't think so. All three of us were pretty tall. I, mean, I don't know if you would have made the photo. Oh. Is, that, is that a problem, being short? Uh, no. Technically, I mean, it isn't, but it could be. It would have been there. <laughs> Definitely would have been. Could have just taken a step back, guys. You could step back so they're wide angle. Yeah, I guess. So you could have got I, me I in there. Yes. I mean, I mean, does it look weird if I, my head's just pe- peeking out the bottom of the picture? Is that weird? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure this out. Hey guys. Hey guys, I'm here. I'm here. Here for my picture. But no, that was cool. Like having a group come in and see us and check us out. And yeah, that's awesome. So, well, we appreciate that. Obviously, you know, in, in all seriousness, you know, thank we thank any one of our customers that come in and. You know, hang out with us for those training classes and, you know, obviously trust us to teach them how to do what they got to do. Yeah, those guys are going to do some cool stuff. I can't wait to see. That's pretty awesome. Uh, what did you guys do this last weekend? I came and watched you No, let's race. not talk about that. I, not, I think nope. I came We're and watched talk about that. race. Didn't we have an event? Like, Shop Saver had an okay. event at the track, I knew right? I shouldn't have asked questions. I knew I should have just started right in the episode. I, I, th- I think that's what happened. Garrett, you weren't there, right? You were busy. I heard about it. We had a good group of us. Did we went up to BIR, right? The yeah. racetrack up there. Were you there, Brandon? North Central? Isn't I wasn't there. there. You weren't yeah, there? he was there, Brandon. I skipped the event. How did it turn out for you? Uh, well... I guess if we're gonna we're gonna go here, we're gonna back up a little bit because I'm gonna do a little bragging first. Yeah. So, I think I successfully set the record for the most consecutive rolls in a hobby stock the week prior. Definitely most airtime. Yeah, it was a lot of airtime. By the way, I'm not an airplane pilot. Um, you know, the taking off part isn't complicated; it's that whole landing thing. Yeah. But yeah, you uh, stuck it. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, I slept for seven hours that entire week, and. I successfully rebuilt a hobby stock, and then I went out and won Friday night at the same track that I rolled the week before. Yeah, I said, well, is that going to see the track this week? There's no way. And you said, it will see the track. You want to bet? What I, I tell you? What I was I confident. You? I, thought, I ain't going to bet. Then we went and won the race. You did? With that same car. Friday night. the same right? track. Yep. So that was cool. And, and then, then, we got, then we got a little bit of self-confidence in us. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shouldn't have gotten. And then Saturday happened. <laughs> Um, 
So we had a little shop saber event. We had a lot of people up there. It was kids' night, so we, we had a lot of people. There was a ton of was people. A ton of people up there. A ton of people. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good night for the races. I mean, a lot of people showed up. However, it wasn't exactly my night. <laughs> I uh, started off your night. Started yeah. off well. I, I drove won, like a pissed off teenager. Won right the first away. race. Yeah. yeah, won the first race pretty, pretty convincingly. Um, yeah, and that was the end of the night. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Because uh, then the second race, I uh, forgot how to drive apparently, and I pretty much lost every body panel that my race car had on it, besides the hood and the roof. He's not kidding. He's not kidding. His bumper was laying out in the track. I'm like, whose bumper is that? I was like, please don't let it be Brandon's. That would be embarrassing. Like, we're all here seeing you race. It was mine. It was yours. Yeah. It, it was definitely mine. Then they come over and, like, stick it through your window and try to hand it to you. I was like. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> I'm sitting there in the doing? car, and he hands me my bumper. Like, through what do you want me to do with this? I guess I'll just drag it off the track. <laughs> hey, Mr. Excitement, just set this in your lap. Yeah. He tried handing my bumper to me inside my race. Like, I. Even I have my, no room in here for this. Even my son made a comment. He's like, why are they sticking his bumper <laughs> through his window? Trust me, I was wondering the same question. <laughs> they want him off the track, son. It's ridiculous. But All nevertheless, we finished stuff. third. You did. Um, we had fun. It was a good time. Oh, it was a blast. So I'm glad we talked about me. Now let's talk about you guys. What did you guys do this weekend? I watched you lose. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I heard about you lose. Uh, I packed. I've been packing. Getting ready for a garage sale. Uh, why are you so packing? Because I'm understand. moving. Oh, remember quitter? Not a quitter. Not Garrett, a quitter. what you did you do? Garrett, do you remember what you did? No, not a chance. Um, <laughs> Garrett, Garrett, not a chance. Garrett, don't stop believing. <laughs> Garrett did karaoke with like what ten thousand people on Saturday. There was a lot of people. I didn't do karaoke, but we we watched that video. You sure did. True. Yeah, they couldn't hear me though. They couldn't hear me. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get let's get uh, let's get to work here. Yeah. Um. Today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about putting in the work. Sweet. <laughs> Weird, right? Weird. Putting in the work. You can talk about that. We'll just listen. Now, but you guys put some work in. Well, that's all you did last week. Yeah. Kicking messages 3 o'clock in the morning. What the hell is he doing? I was Are working. Three? Yeah. So tell us all about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, no, but, you know, we chose this topic because, you know, there's so many people that seem to have forgotten that it takes, you know, a little bit of hard work to get results. Oh, for sure. You know, it, with COVID, the world got lazy. You know, people expected to win and expected to get results without trying. That's very true. And to be honest with you, in some cases that, that worked, you know, <laughs> it, it did. It, and the unfortunate world we lived in, you know, the world has shifted again though now. And you know, you don't, you don't get to take a pass and then, you know, still be successful. It's just not how it works. Typically. No. Yeah. You know, if you don't, if you don't get to work, it's going to pass you right by. I mean, everything's going to pass you by. Absolutely. And then when you're ready to get off the couch or get in the game, well, you're way behind. Yeah. Yeah, deuces. See ya. <laughs> but skeet, you know, skeet, skeet. skeet. Um, but you know, I ask, you know, I'd ask you guys real quick. I mean, when you think about that, you know, when I say, you know, it's time to put the work in, or you know, you tell somebody to put the work in, you know, what comes to mind for you guys? What do you guys think about? Garrett, not um, all at once. Let's not jump right into this one, guys. <laughs> so I mean, sure it's, think about it's it. about it's about putting in the time. I mean, if it's about giving the devoting yourself to whatever you're doing. I mean, you, you can't do it with half heart. You, you know, it's 100%. Give it your all. I think I'm going to nail this one. Doing whatever it takes, right? Doing whatever it takes. No matter what it is, whether it's working 24 hours straight. It's 24 hours in a day. For three days, four days, five days, like Mr. Excitement here, right? <laughs> or it's, it's bringing in extra people, whatever it is. It's, it's doing whatever it takes to accomplish your goal. That's the truth right there. That's exactly my thoughts. Um, you have a choice every day when you wake up. And you have a choice of what you're going to do with your day. You have a choice how hard you're going to work, how lazy you're going to be. You know, what are you going to do? And there's two types of people in this world. There's people who make excuses. And they always say things like, oh, I couldn't do it because this happened. Or, oh, this held me back. Or this, yada, 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 yada. A million reasons why you can't. Mm -hmm. Or you can be the person that just goes and finds that answer. Right. I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm never going to back down. I refuse to lose. I will fight till there's no fight left in me. Yep. And I mean, that's, that's what I demonstrated last week. I mean, it was, I was told by so many people that my race season was done. Mm -hmm. I was told by countless people that that car would never see the track again. And you know, oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to build a new car, buy a new car? I said, I'm going to race next Friday. And everybody told me I was crazy. Except for me. You said you want to bet. And I said, yeah. no, sir. Yep. But that's my point. Is like it was that challenge, right? Right. 
Like, it, was it going to take a whole lot of work to make it happen? I knew it was. <laughs> I knew I wasn't sleeping. But you know what? I knew I knew I was just going to stay away from you yeah. that week. Like, I, I knew that, you know what, it's going to take a lot of energy. It was going to take a whole lot of help from other people. Yep. But we could pull it off. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the thing about it is you rally your troops, right? You rally yep. your group. Every, every person has that group, right? Yeah, I mean, sure. let's be honest. You have a group in your work. You have a group at your personal life, your friends, your family, whatever. You have those people you can count on. You know, I always call them your, your soldiers of life, right? Yep. Y- you know that when things get tough, you have a group of people you can count on. Most people do. For sure. It takes that group of people when things get tough that you just rally behind yourself. You get it done. Yeah, you just refuse to lose. That's why when you said you want to bat, I said, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. And first of all, I, I know you. And I know mm-hmm. the people around you. Mm-hmm. The people around you, most importantly, right? Yeah. Because even yeah. when you drop the ball, I know there's yeah. a couple that are going to pick it up. There's people that pick me up every time. But that's just your mentality, and that's how people know you. Like, you're a grinder. You're going to go get it, and you're going to do what it takes. Yeah. Right? No, I, exactly. And, that, and that's exactly it. I do consider myself a grinder. You know, I don't give up. But um, you, I don't you know lay down. what's important about that, too? Sorry to interrupt you. No, I think you surround yourself with people that are that's, like you. That's where I was just going right? to go. Like, yeah. if you... If I step back and look, like just looking at our team, and I've met, I've been fortunate enough to meet some of your friends in your racing team and stuff yeah. like that. You surround yourself with grinders. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Well, I've always, you know, and I think we talked about this in that episode a few weeks ago, is that we've always said, like, if you hang out with, you know, a certain group of people, you're going to become that group of people. Right. And so I've always found, like, if you hang out with lazy people, you're going to be lazy. Oh, very true. It's easy. Nobody's going to motivate you. If you hang out with grinders and you hang out with people who are out there to work and, you know, they're going to push themselves to the limits, you are too because they're going to push you. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Like if you're the one that's not, Correct. everyone else is kicking ass and here you are like, I'm coming, guys. Yeah, hey, I'll figure it out How are you going to be in yeah. your group? Well, that's exactly it. The group leaves you behind then, you mm-hmm. know? And, I mean, it's, you look at like a, a rowing team, right? Right. They all have to work together to, to make that, that entire system work, right? Yeah. Not one person can lay down. No. Otherwise, the boat goes in circles. What a terrible sport. <laughs> Ask me how I know. I'm tired just thinking about it. Yeah. But, <laughs> terrible sport. What? You know, but my thing is, I don't ever expect someone to do the work for me. I don't ever expect someone to do something for me. I will always put the time in myself. I'll it, get up and do it. When you expect someone to do it for you, it typically doesn't work, right? Like, yeah. I expect you to come mow my yard on Saturdays and you've never showed up. True. Right? Yeah, I'm never gonna. You can't. You can't just expect something yeah. like that. Day in and day out, you got to show up. Right. You got to put the work in. You know, even the days where the excuses are stronger than maybe the vision. Right. Mm-hmm. You still got to find a way to put the work in. For sure. You know, there's plenty of days I have excuses. I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, there's plenty of things going on that I'm like, hey, you know what? Not today. Y- you know, it's gonna happen. You're gonna have those days where things come up. It's yep. the people that have it every single day, every situation. Or you just don't use them. Don't right. use the excuses. Right. You know what makes me mad is when someone has an issue and you present them with a problem, a solution. Like I don't know what to do. Well, hey, here's an idea, and they have something negative to say. Correct. Back to Drives me nuts. It oh, twitching right now. Yeah, but you know. When we start thinking about the world and where we're at and, you know, why so many people began to get lazy about the work they do. I mean, let, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, For what, sure. what started, what led up to this? I mean, I guess let's start, start there is, you know, when you think about the world that we're in and you think about COVID and all the other stuff that happened in the world, how do we end up here? I'll, I'll take number one, unfortunately, working remotely. That's part of the situation that we're in. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's part of it. Um, Mr. I'm moving to Tennessee. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> I get to work here yeah. it's But no, I mean, really, you know, people don't have the interaction with those around them then. And that, that is my concern. I mean, I'm right. going to be honest with you. I've, me and you had this conversation. It's, you know, when you're working remotely, you lose a little bit of that culture. Right. You don't have the drive of people around you, even on your bad days. You know, that's what I've always reminded people is like on a bad day, there's nobody there to lift you up than if you're by yourself working remotely, you know? I think luckily I'm fortunate in that spot, right? Like we got old Brianna going to be working with me. So, yeah, the vibe's going to be terrible in that yep. room. <laughs> um, they're just going to be arguing back they're just and forth. going to be yelling at each other the whole time. You'll be on FaceTime. Frying Dad, we need you to figure this out. Yeah. It is interesting though how it's gotten both sides. Yeah. Like there is, there's been cases, like a couple of my friends work at companies where they've gone full remote now, like to save money with, with all sorts of stuff, but there's companies that it doesn't work as well for. So yeah. it's interesting to see the difference there. Well, I think it really depends on the line of work you're in. Yeah, that's true. You know, if you're in an office environment where you really don't interact, right? 
You're like, in just a big giant office building doing your thing all like day long. Data input. Yeah, you probably don't need that culture, that interaction. There's nothing that you're. But sales, right. right? Like in a sales world, like I couldn't imagine not having that excitement in the room. I couldn't imagine like not hearing people, you know, coach each other up or honestly knock each other down sometimes. You know, right. like <laughs> it's that camaraderie that you have in that. Well, Jeez. I don't know what just happened in the shop. Someone might be injured. But that definitely sounded loud. Yeah. I didn't no one's think, screaming. I didn't even think anybody was here this early in the morning. No one's screaming. Though. Either that or something Oof. fell over. Um, That's a good point, though. Sorry I got distracted there. No, I That was a very loud noise. distracted you. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so, you know, the vibe, the energy, you know, some of that, the, the job is dependent, you know, on if this works or not. You know, because I don't, I don't think most sales guys will be successful when they work remotely. I really don't. Right. Um, you know, that energy is found in your coworkers. Right. Because again, somebody tells you no on the phone three times in a row, right? Yep. Naturally, any person starts to handle rejection, right? And they shut down a little bit. For sure. But when you got a guy sitting next to you hearing yes and he's getting excited, it, it keeps you going. Yep. It motivates you to keep pushing because you know it's coming. Or vice versa. You know, it's one of those things where when you're the guy winning all the time, it, it gives you something to be excited about. It, winning by yourself in a room, you know, home alone isn't exactly as much fun, you know? Right. So, For sure. I think that's part of it. Um, you know, I think the abundance of customers is another part of why people have gotten so lazy, to be honest with you. Because they don't have to work for it anymore? Yeah, there's so many people buying in some industries that the people have gotten lazy. They like, just know people are going to walk through the door. Well, they don't feel like they have to go after every lead because, right. they're, they're, you know, there's less importance on each lead. You know, when leads are scarce, every lead matters. You call them all, you get on the phone, everybody's, you know, getting your full attention. But then you get so many leads that suddenly guys just start cherry picking their work. For sure. You What's easy, for, right? Right. Take the easy road. You know, guys used to work 6 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, and then now they're gone at 5 because, you know, I don't need to work till 6, 7, 8 o'clock at night. So what happens? All those people get pushed off. Therefore, the world's now not getting as much accomplished. Yep. You know, they don't put the extra work in. They don't put the extra effort in on the difficult customers. And let's be honest. Nobody likes dealing with difficult customers, right? But no. But the world, that, that's the world we're in. For sure. Right now, like, you, you have a, a plethora of difficult yeah. people. And I even sometimes will refer to a difficult customer, sometimes just an unsure buyer, right? Yeah. They don't know what they're buying. They don't know why they're buying it. They just know they need to buy something. Like, you know, in, a, in an economy, you know, where things are, you got tons of people and you have more going on than you have people to take care of them, those people get shuffled to the back, right? I don't mm -hmm. have time to teach him how to, you know, do this, or I don't have time to show him how to you know, understand this, blah, blah, blah. You know, I need the guy who understands. Like, and sales guys need to back up and pump the brakes. I mean, it's something I preach here. And we, we have a meeting every week. And I had a meeting yesterday, and we preached it again. That you take the time on every customer. It doesn't matter who they are. Yep. You know, work requires more attention than that. It makes a big difference. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I mean, so when you start looking at that, you have all these customers, you know, obviously. You have an abundance of customers. But you know what else you don't have? Employees. Yeah. Yeah. Staffing. Yeah. You're, sh you know, short staffed. You know, let's be honest. Every everyone's hiring, right? Drive down the street. There's a now hiring sign on everything. Everything. I mean, my God. It's just. It's, if you need a job, you can get one. Oh my God! If you can't get a job right now, like you got to really think about stuff because I'm pretty sure every single person is hiring right now. They are for sure. You yeah. just gotta, you just gotta put in the work. Exactly. You I, know, it's an easy way to lose focus though is when you have more work than you have in people, right? Yep. Your employees get burnt out. The managers get burnt out. You know, business owners get burnt out. Everybody's burnt out because they're all working harder than they thought they'd have to. Absolutely. Like, you know, just an example, the, the pharmacy, right? Yeah. I have to pick up prescriptions for, for kids, wife, whatever. But you go there and there's a line just down the entire aisle. And by the yep. time you get to the counter, those people are so mean. They're so burnt out. Right. There's no work or there's no workers. There's plenty of work, but there's no workers. I showed up on Saturday morning before we came up to the track. Yeah. There was a sign on the door closed. Pharmacy is closed due to employee shortage. We we are closed. Well, really? It's a, it's a Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning. How am I supposed to get it's my a meds? It's a pharmacy. Like yeah. You're, you're dispensing life saving drugs. Well, that's right? exactly it. You, you don't have people. There's no people like. It's not that they don't want to take care of you. It's not that they don't want to be there to help you. I mean, there's restaurants that close because of 
staffing issues. There's, yeah. you know, you, you just don't have the people. And what does that do to the people that do show up every day? It just kills them. More exactly. Stress on them. It's, exactly. It's Why way more I stress. Why am I here? Exactly. Why do I show up every day? Yeah. Well, that's exactly it. You know, many businesses are what, 25% or more down right now? Oh, I would 25% say. 25% or yeah, more. Yeah, I'd say absolutely. Staffing issues, you know, mm-hmm. yet work is returning to record highs right now. Right? Yeah. That's right. We have record high sales numbers. We have record high shipping numbers. Record high call volume. Everything yeah, is through the roof. We have less people. We do. You know, it's like you, you need more people than what, what's out there. You know, leads, it leads to burnout, right? Mm-hmm. It's a revolving door. It's not it so not, much not so much here, but you see it in other places. Right? We've been fortunate enough to keep the team we have for the most part, right? Yeah. But for us, I think we've been fortunate. Well, for sure. We do a really good job at rallying around. I mean, we're kind of the unicorn, if you will, of the situation, right? Yeah. We've been fortunate enough that we've found people when we needed people. We have been able to keep a lot of our good employees. Um, You know, when we have had some turnover, we've been fortunate enough that we've lost some good employees but had some great employees follow in their footsteps. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the door opens, they walk, you know, hey, in this case, I mean, Jesse's leaving. We can't wait till the new guy comes. He's going to be way better. He's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. He's going to be awesome for sure. (laughs) Maybe you guys should hire a girl. We should. Yeah. I she, I tried. I tried to hire in your wife. Once we took she, she moved to Tennessee. <laughs> Once we took our full time girl off the sales floor, we probably should have got another one back, you know? I feel like Equal he was talking hour, about me there. Maybe just a chance. Whoa. I feel like Whoa. that was a shot. Whoa. Um but yeah, you know, the reality is is you know, people have shorter attention spans too right now. Oh, absolutely. Right? You know, they, they have less motivation to deliver the best support they can or the best service they can. Short attention spans and no patience. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Mm. Sign me up. Yeah. And then, obviously, the other thing I think we got to talk about is supply shortages. Wait a minute. There's supply shortages right now? Yeah, right? Weird. You know, in some cases, there's nothing in stock. (laughs) Right? Yeah. So, if you have nothing in stock, how motivated is somebody to do their job? Why would you? You know what I'm saying? Like, that, it just, you lose motivation. You become lazy. There's nothing to ship. I I can't sell you something I don't have. Yeah, exactly. I think Amazon even is starting to run out of two-day stuff. It's like like a week now. It's a week on everything now, yeah. You got less boxes at your doorstep these days? It's great. It's great. (laughs) Boxes are never going to stop. Are you kidding? Yeah. If it's not Amazon, it's race car parts. And I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now. There's a lot of those. The race car parts truck has been there daily, if not twice daily. This is true. And it's going to keep The guy, the FedEx guy asked me last week. So what you working on? <laughs> you a, sh- you should a, probably do something let's nice not talk about for that. him. No. Mm, Does should. that guy need a forklift just to deliver <laughs> all the boxes kind of what I'm to thinking. Like, his back got to hurt by Friday. <laughs> at least offer to take him in a, for a spin. I unload the truck. <laughs> oh, it's stupid. Yeah, it's it's been a lot. But like I said, you know, when you think about that, you know, people at your company probably are beginning to see a little bit less motivation because you don't have the material to do the job, right? Right. You don't have whatever it is in stock that they need to do their job. Mm-hmm. You know, that's... It's challenging. It's frustrating. Yeah, it is. It's very frustrating. You know, because on top of all that, they're still dealing with customers that are mad at them, you know? <laughs> like, I trust me, I want to do my job. I wish I had parts too, right. you know? But it's like it's like people like have their head in the sand sometimes. Like, where yeah. have you been? Ugh. This is this isn't like a this week problem. Yeah. You know, this has been going on for some time. Is that I've, a typical thing? People just put their head in the sand. I think so. Oh, okay. like, we'll just I'm pretend this isn't that. like we're just going to pretend this isn't going on. That's kind of the yeah. thing. Like, let's just pretend this isn't happening. I might try and put my head in the sand next weekend. You should. I'm gonna try. I mean, what is happening from these bad habits though? You know, these bad habits that are forming. What what what's coming of it? Oh, people are losing customers. Right? People yeah. are walking away. I think so. You know, many customers take their situation personally, and then, you know, while you, you may get the sale, you know, this time they just simply won't come back the next time, right? Right. Because they didn't feel like you put the effort in. Right. And, you know, the other thing that's happening is people are losing their reputation over that. For sure. Definitely you know? take a hit on the reputation. If they don't come back, they aren't going to tell others to do the same thing. Why would they? Yeah. Hey, well, I'm not going to go there again, but you should. You know, they're not going to do that. <laughs> right. Therefore, wanna... word of mouth changes, and you begin to find yourself selling against yourself. That's a tough problem. I hate selling against yourself. Yeah. It's the worst thing you can do. It's a bad problem. You're spending resources to overcome self-created problems. (laughs) Right. Right? Stand in your own way. Yeah. Stay in your lane. And then, obviously, you're going to lose revenue on that. Stay on the track. Jeez. 
Jeez. If you go no there, one wants to lose revenue. Yeah, nobody likes losing money. No. You know, you lose customers, your reputation, you're going to lose green stuff. <laughs> and that stuff matters right now, right? The green stuff's important. Inflation's through the roof right now. Every dollar counts. Money makes everything happen, unfortunately. That's true. And Can't do much without it. You better hustle today if you want to play tomorrow. Like right? That. Yeah. I mean, if you're not hustling today, forget playing. Right. Because you're going to be hustling tomorrow then trying to make up for the hustle you didn't do today. It sounds like my house. Like, you're not playing outside unless you get those chores done. <laughs> Is that what Bree says to you? Right. Absolutely. For sure. You should see that honeydew list. It's all I ever do is chores. If you're not working me to death, she is. Yeah. I, uh, you know, the other thing you do is you fall behind. You know, everything falls behind. Mm-hmm. It's not uncommon to be behind right now just because of everything else going on. Right. You know, it's a record year and supply chain constraints. However, the lack of motivation, work, or drive will begin to tear things apart from the inside out. For sure. Absolutely. I mean, literally, just, you'll, it'll, it'll tear your company apart it'll inside out. It'll you. It'll get you. Yep. And that's what's happening with these bad habits that are being formed. So as a business owner, you need to start breaking those habits. Oh, you need to do it fast. Oh, yeah. Like we've been in this situation for years, right? Yep. This isn't a month thing. This is over two years now. Yep. So these aren't just bad habits. These are people set in their ways now. Yeah, exactly. Right? Trust me. I, these are lifelong habits right now. Yep. That's why I've, I mean, I've been, again, fortunate enough this entire time, I've, we've kept meetings going and kept driving the focus. But, you know, even us, we've had to break some habits, you know? Mm-hmm. For it's sure. Just, it is what it is. You know, yeah, it's time to put the work in, though. I mean, it really is. That, that's where we're at is you got to start looking at ways to get back to the grind, get back to your routines, develop, update routines, um, you know, put in the hours where you can or where you need to. You know, we, we all want to work less. Let's be, out, be honest with each other, right? Work less, make more, right? That, that's what we all want. That's common goals. Right. How about a beer? It's not reality. No, it's not. We all want to work less, but the reality is we're going to, you know, working less will generally result in making less or having less, right? That's typically it, true. It's not usually the other way around. Hey, I worked less and I made more. It doesn't <laughs> happen. Sorry. Both of us, you know, both usually aren't what people want. People don't generally want to make less, you know? No, I, I can't recall a time where I've woken up and been like, man, I'd like to make less money today. I'd like to make less today and have less. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't happen. The That'd world be, is... Well, have less, maybe. Sometimes I look around my yeah. house and like, man. Like, God, I got to sell that. I got to sell that. Yeah. Sometimes it'd be easier just to throw a gas can in and... <laughs> <laughs> sounds messy. It does. For somebody else. <clears throat> but, you know, you have 24 hours in the day. Yep. And what are you going to do with them? You need to use them all. Okay. For a purpose. Seriously, you have 24 hours in a day. You need to use them all for a purpose. Think about that. Right. There's a purpose for every hour of that day. Correct. Take the time to do the work. Take the time to go through and take the necessary steps to be successful. 24 hours in the day. There's no reason you shouldn't use every single one of those hours for a purpose. Right. And some of those pur- some of those hours might be the purpose of re-energizing. So that's sleep. Right. Right. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. You know, people are listening like, oh, you got to sleep eventually. That, that's a Absolutely. purpose still. Yeah, for but sure. There's a certain amount of sleep you need. And then there's called being lazy. Absolutely true. You don't need 46 hours of sleep. No, you don't. Sorry. No, you don't. In a 24-hour day. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. Think about this. There's a guy, and I I don't remember who he is, but he said it, and he said it perfectly, but he's like, you know, if you sleep every day, if you think about this, if you sleep every day till 8, 9 o'clock, right? Mm Mm-hmm. You're falling behind. And the reason I, they say that is because, think about it, if you're, if you're central time zone, right? Yep. And you sleep till 8 or 9 o'clock, think about what the coast is already doing. They've already been awake for two hours. They're already making money decisions for two hours. Still sleeping in California. Yeah, that's my point, though. Like, you, <laughs> you can't just base it off that. Like, right. if you're doing this stuff globally and you're trying to make a decision, they're making money moves while you're sleeping. Yep. Yes, they are. Your competitors are making money moves. Yep. They're up and working. It's time to get up and work. Yep. Like, there's a reason why you will find me awake every single day at 5 a.m. Ooh, that's a tough one. Because I'm going to make sure that I'm up for that 7 o'clock wake up that everybody else is doing where I'm not. We hit snooze a little bit. I'm going to do 545. That's fine. That's okay. It's still 745. Thank you. I'm okay with that. Thank you. But my point is, you got to grind. You got to work. You do. You do. It's not just going to come to you. Yeah. It's not just going to show up at your doorstep, knock on the door and say, There's a reason why these guys... Success get, is here. Yeah. Open up. There's a reason why these guys get emails from me at four in the morning. Right. 
I was still emailing at one in the morning last night. See? That's yeah. my man. I think you also need to take time to do something that you enjoy doing too. You can't get so caught up in that lifestyle that you need you need something that you can resort to, like take a step back. Okay, I need to do something I enjoy for an hour. I think there's value in that too. Oh, for sure. You yeah. gotta clear your head. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's yeah. gotta you gotta it's work life balance. That's what right. it's called. Absolutely. And the problem is is there are a lot of people that forget that it's work life balance. Yep. And they make it life work balance. And the problem is is work can't ever come second. Work is what helps you make a life. Very true. Simple as that. And like there's a reason why it's called work life. Because you have to work to build the life you want. You do. You've got it. You gotta put the time in. Like you you can have anything you want in this world. You just gotta help enough people get what they want in this world. Yep. Simple as that. Yep. Put in the time. Get your ass to work. Right. Like right. I'm just gonna get say, off the couch. Like get off the couch. Get your ass to work. But they're paying me to stay home. Stop watching what everybody else is doing. That's the one thing that drives me nuts. Keep your eyes on your own bobber. Yep. Like there's, you know, it's something that I've learned from racing more than anything. It's called keep your eyes in your own notebook. Because you see guys out there that they get beat, and the first thing they start doing is crying about how somebody's cheating. No, he's just outworking you. Yep. Simple as that. Yep. I saw that post this week. You got beat because you got outworked. Yep. Like, that's what it is. It comes down to that. And, I, and I'm that guy. I get beat, I go back to work. Trust me, after Saturday, I've been working on my stuff every day now. Like, I've got to figure this out. Like, that was not good. <laughs> yeah, you, you look like it. You look like you haven't slept in yeah, a week. Yeah, it's, it's been a rough one. But you, you my point it, is, is like, you, you keep did the going. Work. You keep driving. Right. You could have quit. You could have said, ah, we'll get it next week, right? We'll just we'll get yeah. this. You, you did it. You took the time. You put the work in. And, yeah, you're tired. Yep. Right, but look what you did. Guess what? I'll get sleep someday. Look what you did. Yeah, like we how good does that and, feel? Right? Yeah, like, we rolled the car and we won it one week later. That's a cool story for right. the rest of my life. Right, absolutely. And how's that feel? Like I bet you're tired. Yeah, you can't wait to get yep. to sleep, but I bet you feel pretty damn good. Yeah, it was, it was pretty wild. Like I tell everybody, is you know, it, it's the, the pride you take in the work you do, but seeing other people take pride in the work you did. Right. You know, I I pulled into Victory Lane and I got out of the car and that was the loudest I've ever heard the crowd ever in my life. I've never heard the crowd so loud in my entire life. On Friday night. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that made it worth it all right there. That had to be incredible. Like, to hear all the people that were cheering us on for getting back out there and doing it, you know, and, like, just how much excitement everybody was having, you know, and then meeting all the fans on Saturday. We went out, and we, they did meet the driver thing, and, you know, obviously I, my car had a line around it. Like, you know, it was people you just— sold out of Let's Go Brandon shirts. Yeah, I mean, my racing shirts sold out. Like, they, <laughs> yeah, we talked about—I mean, I had— a million questions about that accident and a million questions about how I got it back together. And it was cool. It like, was cool. It makes it worth all the effort, all the sleepless nights. It makes it worth everything that you do in that moment. Right. I think but, that's the best part when someone asks and you get to share a little bit of your story and how you got to yeah. make it happen. Well, that's my thing is now take this, you know, I'm talking about racing cause that's my story right now, but right. take it to your business now. Like that you're building that American dream right now. Yep. Right. Like yep. this is your opportunity to build your story. You make it the way you want, and exactly what Garrett said. Somebody's going to ask you about how you got there. For sure. And you know what you're going to tell them? I worked my ass off. That's how I got there. I did. I outworked everybody yeah. else. Yep. That's like, what, that happened to me this weekend because obviously I have my photography business. Yeah. And I had a few people ask me about it. And I mean, same thing. You get to tell them, you know, like where you came from, how you yep. got there. Exactly. And a lot of people are pretty inspired by it. So same thing with any business, whether it's photography, whether it's cabinet shop. Yeah. Whatever. That's exactly it. Like you got to work your ass off. You, mm -hmm. I mean... And I'm going to keep saying it. If you're being lazy, you're going to get nothing. You will. Like, get off your ass and work. Yep. Success and that means just come to lazy people. Yeah, that means you got to invest in yourself. you got to start making changes. you got to make money moves. And some of that money move is, I'm adding a CNC router. Right. I'm adding a CNC plasma. Correct. That's your next money move. Yep. If you don't have one right now, get off your ass and get one. You, you, you have to. This is the direction the world is going. If anyone doesn't see it, you got your eyes closed. Yeah. Right? We're selling more machines than we ever have. There's a demand that we've never seen. Correct. And it's not going to stop. Yeah. The less people in the workforce, the more demand for equipment. Exactly. Right? So when you call, you say, hey, how far are you guys out? Well, we got a little bit of a lead time. Yeah. Right? Call now. The Get longer you, going. The longer you wait, the more competitors have them. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. It becomes more of an emergency the longer you push it off. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. I've always said, right, 
lack of planning on your part doesn't constitute an emergency on my part. Correct. And that's the truth. Like, Correct. If you're not willing to plan ahead and start thinking about the fact that you're going to need this coming up or that your competitors are doing these moves or your competitors, are, and then you're going to call up and say, I need something yesterday, that's, that's unfortunate because I can't get you one yesterday. Right, right. Well, I'm going to buy a competitor's product. Yep, you you're going to regret that. You have that choice. Yeah. But give me a shout when you got to replace that one. Right. Like, I, I'm that confident in what I do. But I mean, they're going to get it to me sooner. Yeah, I do it all day long every day. Trust me, nobody's building a better machine than us right. for right. less. It doesn't happen. And the reality of where you're at in your business, you need to have that same confidence. That same confidence in yourself that nobody's doing it better than you for less. And the only way you're going to continue to get better is keep upgrading. And if you go to shopsaver.com. It's very true. And then you go to shopsaver.com. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I'd recommend it highly. You recommend that? I do. Yeah. I think it, or yeah. give us a call. What might they see out there? They might see a lot. Really. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you should go look. You tell us see some of the things. Find. You tell Maybe us you can tell us something they yeah. see out there. What's um, something? What's something exciting? One thing they could see is a lot of resources <laughs> on our machines. He's uh, literally just trying to annoy me. Have you ever looked at our website? <laughs> have you been on the website ever, Garrett? I've been on there. You've been out there one time. Go look at it. I'm Are going there new right videos? now. New videos weekly. Do we have something coming? Soon, like, are we gonna post something new soon? Hopefully, <laughs> you're gonna get body I'm slammed. Gonna by him. I'm gonna hurt him. I made, I I made a wall a decor. Ca- I wish there was hey. a camera in here. I made right a now. wall decor <laughs> piece. I wish there was a camera in here. I can't handle them. I just can't. Brandon's um, forehead's pounding. <laughs> oh my god. No, we, do, we have two new videos coming yeah. within the next two weeks. Yeah, two I'll say weeks. we have the table video coming, right? If that ever finishes, we'll get that up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I have a video that will be coming out shortly this week uh, sometime. Uh, it's funny. I uh, <laughs> If it ever finishes. Yeah, it's, take, it's been a long project, but we, we're almost there. Well, the table actually just finished. Now we just got to get the video done. Yeah, there's a lot of video that we're putting uh, together right now. It's going to be a well, long one. When you film for three months on something. It's going to be a movie. It's, yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit hard to condense that into a 30-minute. Yeah, it's going to be Top Gun 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be unbelievable. No. I want to be ice man. <laughs> You're not ice man, bro. <sighs> Such a lie. You're more like don't say it. <laughs> don't <Yeah>. say it. <laughs> this will not be your day. <laughs> On that note, yeah. we should go back to work. On that note, I'm Brandon. <laughs> I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop shop saver. <laughs>